What's up, my beautiful people? Welcome to the War Room. And we are back with the latest boxing news and this week's Turkey Day fight coverage. I want to thank you guys for tuning in. I am your fight goddess, Chris Baldwin, here with my boxing family, Melissa Smith, women's boxing historian, and my boy, Eddie Goldman. He is the conscious of combat sports. How you guys doing today? You like this new banner back here? We getting there. <laughs> Yes, Love it. yes. That's right. We're, <laughs> look, the studio is in kind of transition, right? The uh, war room headquarters, underground headquarters is moving to an undisclosed location. But uh, we'll have the Parts new studio. Unknown, right? Yeah, right. The, we'll have the new studio up and running soon. So, uh, yeah. but. And, uh, I, and I also have my, you know, my my Eddie Gomez button here. There you, you go. Know. You guys need some no Eddie Goldman barred, gear. You know. That's right. No holes barred <laughs> gear. You got, you got to go to his site. No, uh, Eddie Goldman dot com. <laughs> yeah, it's be- red, red bubble. Like out of all these different yeah, designs. Yeah. That's cool. Uh, all and, kinds of my schmatas and stuff. You, you got to support independent journalism. Okay. That folks? Is it. That's what it is. <laughs> all right. So um, we're going to get right into this heel Fimo, T- what is his name? Tia Fimo Lopez. Tia Fimo Lopez. Who got kaboomed by Cam Who got <laughs> kaboom by the Australian he got that fighter. Oh my God, that was some. That was a good fight. Fight. That, that was, was a good fight. fight. So George Cambosis Jr., who was uh, prior to this fight, you know, was uh, nineteen and zero, and out of out of Sydney, Australia, has had has beaten uh, Mickey Bay in Madison Square Garden on a split decision. You know, he's, he's one of these road warriors. He's, he's out of Australia, but he's been fighting in Wembley and Madison Square Garden in Athens, Greece, in, in Las Vegas. These are just the last, since 2019, these are his fights. So he's a road warrior who came to the house of Tiafima Lopez uh-huh. at the Hulo Theater in Madison Square Garden on a on a mandatory um, IBF fight, he was the mandatory um, opponent that had what five been rescheduled five times, including you know a failure at Trilla Trash, which uh, DAZN then picked up the fight on a purse bid and wow. made it their main event on, at the Hulu Theater uh, again in, in Madison Square Garden. So you know not the main room, but. In New York, when you have a Puerto Rican fighter from Brooklyn fighting, you got a house full of really serious fight fans. So you know who they were screaming for, T.O., T.O., T.O. And, you know, Lopez, he He got served up. He got served. So Lopez came into that real cocky. There was a lot of bad blood between the two of them. They almost came to blows in the in the pre-fight stuff, you know, in the last week. Um, and basically his whole thing was, Hey dude, I'm going to take you out in the first round. Goodbye. Good night. I, I, it's a quick payday. Get my million dollars and walk. That's what he thought and was going to happen. That's what he thought was going to happen. And Cambosis came with a plan. Now this is a young man that has a, you know, again, he was 19 and 0. he's uh, 28 years old. And come to learn that he had been one of Manny Pacquiao's serious sparring partners for several years. They have fought hundreds of rounds. Mm. So this is not some like lightweight dude. He came in there with serious skills, one year of really heavy duty thought process into how he was going to take out Lopez. And he came into that ring with a plan. And part of his plan was to knock Lopez down in the first round. And where he got that plan is he said he had uh, one of the fights of, that he has really watched in his, in his life was Ali Frazier, Muhammad Ali, the first fight. And he talked about how Muhammad Ali had gone to Customer and said, what, what, what should I do in this fight? You know, what, what, what should my approach be? And he said, go in there and knock that man down with the best right you ever threw. And that is exactly what Cambosis did in that first round. And he took some serious shots from Lopez because Lopez came out really fast saying, I'm going to knock this guy down and that's it. I'm going to go home, get my pay. 
and and then I'm going to get, you know, be the next Mayweather with millions and millions and millions and millions of dollars to like buy cars with. Well, Cambosis took those shots, moved, sat behind the jab and watched and waited. And Lopez threw something looping, his hands went down and boom, overhand right. Lopez went down on his tuck. And yeah, but he like, kept getting hit with that overhand right. So all like, night. Yeah, long. I just could not believe it. And I know his dad was upset because he the way he came out in that first round was just so undisciplined. It's like when I, uh, totally I de- I've debuted a few fighters and they get so amped up. Like a guy did exactly what he did. He went out there and got knocked out in the first round because he ju- he just... So, you know, second round, Lopez came back. He was smarter. He was stronger. But the thing was... He, he had been knocked down. Right. George Cambosis was already in the dude's head. And the thing is, Cambosis had a lot of different shot selections. He had beautiful lateral movement. He was turning him around. And whenever Lopez was trying to get him into the ropes, he would pivot around, hit him, pivot, come back to the center of the ring. So he was in control of that ring from the first round to the 12th. Like and and Lopez's was, hands were down much of the fight. Right. So. Hands were down. Hated and he the way he was in, fighting. It was just terrible. Barely used his jab. He was tired. He was panning. And then he'd come to his corner and his dad would say, ah, yeah, you're doing great. I love that roll. He used the shoulder roll one. Still got hit. And they don't I think they lost. Roll. And they, you know, so they, this went on. And then... Um, so, so Lopez, you know, he, he probably took the third and the fourth round, but Cambosis, fourth, fifth, sixth, he took all those middle rounds. He just out fought him, out boxed him, Finished started strong. cutting up his face. Then in the ninth and tenth round, Cambosis even said, I got a little too cocky. I was playing to the crowd. And he did. He got hit and he got a, he had a, a knockdown in the 10th round and everybody thought, OK, that's it. Lopez is going to kill him now. Oh, that's no. it. And the crowd starts like, Tio, Tio. Well, wow, OK, now the mother effer, you know, he's going to fuck him up. Well, Cambosis comes into the 11th round and says, no, no, no. I know. OK, I got a little sloppy. I am back on my game. His game is jab, right, straight right, uppercuts. Left hooks out of nowhere, lead, lead right hands. He had Lopez flummoxed, and by the 12th round, he was all cut up, bleeding. I mean, in he the 11th, bloody the 11, mess, he was a bloody mess. And and like they're in the corner, his father's like, Well, just go in there and take him out. They're not That's even taking his cuts, nothing, no direction, nothing. 12th round, Cambosis had him down twice. <laughs> On friggin' all real. that shit so, talking, all that all shit talking. So, they, so we we are, you know. So everybody was like, "Oh my God, Cambosis really did this!" And then it's in the hands of the judges, and you know how that goes, right? This is boxing. Lopez is the champ. You have it's to do home. more. It was right. a close fight. It was at home. Surprise! Surprise! I was shocked. Fair I just knew they judging. were going to give it to, to Lopez. He, you know, it was split decision, but yeah, 115, 112, and one, you know, 113, 114. So fair. Even when the guy, even the per, you know, the judge who went for Lopez is not like it was one of these. Oh no, he was, you know, he had all 10 rounds. <laughs> yeah, 10 out of 12. So really extraordinary boxing high quality beautiful boxing and that's that's what happens when you come in there with a plan he is now you know the most the most decorated fighter that australia has ever had this is a really big deal and i gotta tell you you watching boxing twitter last night and you had people like crawford going oh my god (laughs) you know boxing twitter went crazy they were going crazy last night um and 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 he's like, I want to fight. You know, everybody's like, I right. want to fight him. Ryan Garcia, I want to fight him. Every So this young guy, I mean, his ticket is clocked because he's the real deal. Hell yeah. He's, really won. he's unified. There's only one more buy about to have. Haney wins, you know, any, uh, 
and, and uh, Eddie Hearn at Matchroom is like, I don't have the guy. He's not. He signed with L Lou DiBella. And Lou DiBella was one happy dude last night uh, in the corner of uh, Cambosis after the fight. So we'll see what happens. Right on. Congrats, you know, team Cambosis. Cambosis. One, one of the things you mentioned is the beyond absurd comments and instructions by Teofimo Lopez Sr. Yep. to his son during this fight. And it's just indicative of the decline in quality of trainers and boxing overall. You, it doesn't, it's not always the case, but a lot of times these fighters have their, their father as a trainer. They've been training them since they were little kids and they may have helped them uh, get in shape and develop and learn some basics and work their way through the amateurs. Now that they're on the elite level fighting other elite fighters, right. you're really often going to need an elite trainer, not a yep. cheerleader. And even in even in Anthony Joshua's corner, uh, when he fought Usyk the last time, you had cheerleaders rather than people laying it out clearly what what has to be done, what's really going on in the fight. And I think it was particularly egregious. I think L Lopez himself thought he won 10 rounds to two. I mean, it's just insane. It's one thing fighters may think in a close fight that they won. That's why you're supposed to have neutral judges. But he, he was just in denial. He's he got yeah. so drunk from the notoriety of being the consensus 2020 fighter of the year, the undisputed lightweight champion, all the accolades. He's been in the headlines for months because his fight got postponed so many times. Uh, the nonsense with a uh, thriller trying to promote it. And they were too in incompetent to do it. And then, and then uh, Lopez getting COVID and coming back. And I wonder if there's still some effects of, of COVID. Because there may way be. I agree with you. And and he has the weight issue, you know. Him getting to 135 is killing him. Yeah, and he, and he also, where was his head in this fight? Because before this fight, all he was talking about is, well, I'm done at 135. I'm going up to 140. I'm going to vacate the belt. He didn't he didn't really pay any mind to Cambosis. To him, it was a, a done deal, like it was a you know, a, a mismatch. And obviously that he was wrong on that. And I don't know when he's going to come to realize your whole view of things was wrong. And that's very hard for people, particularly younger people to, I get maybe older people too, but to realize your entire worldview is wrong and counted by reality, not in sync with reality. So he's going to have to make some some serious changes and uh, you know he said he's going to go up to 140 but we'll see what he does there well go up to 140 but if he still has his father in his corner who's equally delusional saying things last night like oh man i made a mistake we shouldn't have gone with the zone we should have gone with top rank it was like what, what? Top rank didn't you know this is delusion what that if he went to crazy. top rank the judges would have wouldn't the saw the fight properly? I mean, what the heck was that? Yeah. The zone won the the bid. They're the making first bid. excuses. They're just making excuses. They're which making is pathetic. Top but to Eddie, Eddie, finished third in the purse bid behind yeah. Triller and Matchroom. Exactly. And then when Triller defaulted, Matchroom and Eddie Hearn got it, and they put on the fight. Top rank was not interested in paying yep. for this fight. No, they didn't want it because who knows what's really going on with Top Rank? You know. I, I mean, g given where they are, they have so few fights that they're putting on. I mean, uh, we talked about this before, right, Eddie? You know, wh where is their support? Here was Crawford Porter. They had so few pay-per-views because they put it on exclusively on ESPN+. Plus. I mean, it's there's there's really big issues here. Meanwhile, the DAZN, DAZN has its own issues with how many subscribers they are, but Look, they had two cards this weekend. They had a card from Mexico City, uh, uh, from Mexico on, on Friday night with uh, two women as the main event. It was a really good fight with Erica uh, Cruz Hernandez, who had beaten Jelena uh, 
Medernovich uh, to take the WBA World Feather title in her last outing. She was defending. She fought a, a really game good boxer named Melissa Esquivel. But the interest here is, you know, she's she stands in the way of Amanda Serrano being able to become the undisputed champion in Feather. So uh, that was really an interesting fight for them to have put on. And obviously, you know, given that DeZone Eddie, and Eddie Hernan through Matchroom is, is looking to match Taylor and um, Amanda Serrano in a big super fight, that was a really smart thing to do. So I, I'm liking what I'm seeing. They also had two female bites on the undercard of their Madison Square Garden fight, uh, of the Cambosis Lopez fight. They had Christina Cruz, who's a really popular New York City-based fighter, you know, grew up in the Hell's Kitchen. She's a, she's the, the, she has won the most Golden Gloves titles in the history of New York City. Wow. Uh, at, at Madison Square Garden, which is her house. She won 10 titles. She's an eight-time national champion. She had was continuing to be in, in the amateurs, but ended up because of the COVID situation, switched to uh, the uh, to the pros. She's a great fighter. She won uh, her she? second bout. She's 38, but man, you wouldn't know it. She was running rings around her young, much younger opponent. And um, so she looks great. And then you had Ramla Ali, who's a British fighter, managed by uh, Anthony Joshua, of all people, a Somali uh She's from oh, Somali originally, an immigrant, immigrant, um, really working for sports justice uh, as in boxing and other sports in in, uh, in the UK. She had a really good, beautiful, fought a beautiful four round fight. So I, I got to say, you know, uh, hats off to DAZN for making some good moves and laying down some foundations for the future. So it's we'll, we'll see. I like to hear that uh, AJ has gotten into management. That's cool. Yeah. We can kind of he, see he's going to stay in boxing after he retires. Yeah, no, he has. And and, and, and Canelo too, with that promo promo company, they promoted the exactly. uh, fight in Puerto Vallarta that we watched. Uh, exactly. Yeah, but uh, the then there was that other great fight, Eddie, right, with on uh, Showtime. Yeah, another fight that probably few people watch. I mean, the yeah. thing with... Which so was they this? have had a lot of important the uh, Brandon Figueroa Stephen Fulton Jr. fight. Oh, I started mm. watching that this morning. The, the yeah, both of those, by the way, the the Cambosis Lopez and the Figueroa Fulton fight were for briefly trending at number one on Twitter in the U.S. But that'll give you the the wrong impression about how many people are really watching this and. Both of them were really exciting and important fights to watch for th their own reasons. But that doesn't mean that many people are watching or, or care anymore. The boxing business, business is, is in the toilet. And, you know, the 135,000 buys Crawford and Porter was an exciting fight. I just did an article on my Patreon about that. It was an exciting fight. It was, you could, it was a good fight to watch. It was obviously a very important fight and few people watch it because the pay-per-view model, I've been saying this for many years, is dead. And that's when they were getting eight, nine hundred thousand, a million, million two people watching the major pay per views. Now you're getting a hundred and two hundred thousand people, with the exception of maybe one or two fights a year, like a Canelo fights or Fury, or it'll do better in other countries. But I'm mainly talking about the U.S. And that was the the problem with this fight on Twitter. The, the, the yeah, boxing Twitter was all over this fight, having a great time in this. It was a tremendous all-action fight between Fulton and Figueroa. But again, here's one of the many pitfalls of boxing. Often when you have a scintillating fight like this, and if you haven't seen it, I recommend people to see it. And really, the whole card was pretty good. When you have both fighters put on memorable performances, but it goes to a decision, the judges manage to ruin the elation and admiration felt by the fans. And in this fight, the majority decision of Fulton over Figueroa was not a robbery. It was a close fight. But most knowledgeable people had Figueroa winning this contest 
but two of the judges had it 116-112 for Fulton or eight rounds to four. And the fans in the arena booed the decision and those people watching on TV and online denounced these one-sided scores. The moment was ruined thoroughly. And this is the result of the corrupt and incompetent governance, which is destroying boxing. Because as, as this fight was going on, you seeing it's a tremendous amount of action. I don't really give a lot of credence to punch stats, but the numbers are really through the roof. And, and also, was I should add, it was a unification fight of two of the super bantamweight belts and two undefeated fighters. And I felt that uh, Figueroa was using his height and reach advantage very well. Fulton was holding and pushing a lot, but getting a lot of work done on the inside and body shots and, and all of that. And it was nonstop action. And I felt that, you know, a rematch could be warranted before hearing the, hearing the decision. So when they read the decision after an, an all action fight that fight fans love, the crowd boos Fulton. Figueroa says, everyone knows I won, which by the way is almost exactly what Lopez said after his fight, except that Figueroa was, was accurate. And Fulton is kind of defensive and says, uh, let's do it again. And, and maybe they will. Maybe they'll move up. Figueroa beforehand said he's thinking of moving up from uh, 122 to featherweight to 126. We'll see what happens. He said maybe they could have the rematch at 126. But I don't know if Fulton is, is ready to move up. Uh, at this point, he has two of the belts and he might want to try and become undisputed champion there or whatever he's going to do, deal with mandatories, whatever is next for him. So that's that's the mixed bag on that fight. They also had a couple of other fights to watch. Uh, Raiz Alim got a majority decision over Eduardo Baez. And Alim kept, but Baez is a real volume puncher. But even though Aleem was a little bit sloppy, and he's also super bantamweight, he was able to, to do more work. And again, that was sort of the opposite thing. It was, to me, Aleem clearly, clearly won that fight. And uh, the opening bout had Gary Antonio Russell, one of the many Gary Russells in boxing, against uh, Alejandro Santiago. People, again, going into this fight, thought that uh, Russell would destroy Santiago. It did not happen. I had it even after eight rounds and gave the ninth round to uh, Santiago. And Santiago was winning the 10th. And it was only a 10-round fight. But Russell came up with a late rally, a big flurry. So a lot of people gave him that round. And, I thought a draw would have been okay. So it ended up being a majority decision. The scores weren't too big. You had one judge gave it 95-95. Two gave it 96-94 for Russell. It was a mixed reaction from the crowd. More cheers for Santiago, a fighter from Mexico, who was not as well known. But it was not, it was not a robbery. But it was some good fights to watch. They had good fights. And we'll find out during the week. How many people watch? They beginning in the 200, 300,000 range, finishing, you know, around number 100 in the K shows for the night. It's not good. It's not heading in a good direction. Even though this was a good, this was a good part. They were competitive fights. It wasn't a lot of the usual mismatches that you see. So again, it's the same. It's the same mess that's going on. They they ruin. They, they find a way to ruin the moment with this. So yeah. if you got Showtime, watch it. It was a good fight, but it's it's not getting to it's not getting an audience beyond uh, the small number of very vocal hardcore fans. And and I talked about in that in the article with Crawford and Porter, which we discussed a lot in depth last week. Good fight, important fight, all of that. 
How many pay per views buys did it get? 135,000 is that's report. it. They didn't even make break even, Damn. they needed 150 for break even. So, really rough. Um, you know, well, that part of that is uh, because of the people are also, you know, streaming the shit too for free. Well, it's streaming, and the thing is that it's ESPN plus, they didn't put it on regular ESPN, so you had to wow. not only you had to also sign up, right? Right, so it, 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 it turned you know, at least like Showtime when they did their streaming, and I think Fox when they did their streaming, you could buy it as a one time, mm-hmm. like the Canelo was a one time. Uh, so, um, and they gave for, you a couple of free months for that also. Yeah. But for ESPN plus you had to sign up, which, you know, it's low for these prices right now. It's like what, four ninety nine, five dollars $5 a month, something like that. No, it's a little bit more, you know, oh, it doesn't, the, the UFC fans, you know, the main, the, the, uh, the Trump people that right. have a lot of money to throw around. So they, that's the way they do the UFC pay-per-views and they're yeah. trying this with boxing and it. You it's, know, whoever it's, thought they could get away with this is a complete misreading of what's going on among boxing fans, the economy, the country, and everything else. I agree. And, you know, I got to tell you, the, the rest of the DAZN card last night was also great. There was a terrific fight uh, for uh, the IBF World Super Feather title with uh, Kenichi Ogawa fighting oh, Zinga Fozili. That was a I great fight. Damn. I mean, that was excellent boxing. Really, really excellent boxing. And, that uh, crush Fuz- right hit the spot. <laughs> yeah. Fazili uh, ended up losing. Uh, but, oh, my God. He was a bloody mess, too. He was a bloody mess. And it ended up winning, going to the cards. I mean, it, basically, he, he was just, just all blood and swollen. Right. But, you know. The, the the ref let it finish. And I got to tell you, parenthetically, the refing in, in, on the at a work, Madison Square Garden was excellent the whole night, and that too. You know, the, the I have to say, the judges got that right. And then there was another fight. Uh, Raymond Ford fought um, Felix Caraballa for just a WBA. You know, one of the baby belts, but excellent, excellent outing. Uh, Raymond Ford is nine and oh, nine oh and one. Um, just terrific boxing, great show. This is a kid that's going to be worth watching in the future. And then they had a heavyweight bout to start the main con with this uh, two six foot five guys, uh, Zalel Zhang uh, out of China. Zhang Zilei, yeah, yeah, Zhang Zilei, and Craig very Lewis. Very slow. But I got to tell you, he looked fast last night, and he got a second round knockout. I mean, given that. Craig Lewis, uh, you know, I had all of a week to prepare for the fight. Uh, who is <laughs> Craig Lewis? He's, you know, journeyman uh, fighter who was 14 and four coming in the 14, four and one coming into last night. I mean, he, he just, he was just a cannon fodder, but um, Zhang actually looked pretty good. He did not look like a 275 pound, six he foot five guy. He did an Olympian, right? Yeah, he had fought uh, AJ was, in the quarterfinals yeah. in 2012, so and lost. But um, he, he, you know, it was surprising. Actually, he looked pretty darn good. Um, very, very beautiful uh, overhand right, um, uh, straight right. Sorry, but anyway, uh, so the whole card was good uh, on the DAZN card, and uh, the judging was for a change. I would say decent. <laughs> um throughout the night so that which uh surprised me because you never know (laughs) because you know we've seen some crazy judging uh in the last few weeks on some fights so so. on saturday you did i mean in in the lopez cambosis fight the judges in new york got it right but in the figueroa fulton fight the judges got it really wrong yep yeah, and and by two white, two white. As I said, even you know, one of the judges who went for Lopez gave it one fourteen, one thirteen. It wasn't crazy. You could, you know, maybe he was overly generous, uh, but or he or she, I can't remember the name of the judge, but um, the the point was it wasn't insane. It wasn't like giving it, you know, one eighteen, one twelve. I mean, something crazy like that. Other sports have taken 
measures to deal with what might be honest mistakes in officiating. And I'll just give an example, a sport that I know better than others is baseball. There was a ball game several years ago where a Detroit Tigers, a nondescript pitcher, was pitching a, a perfect game. And he had gone to two outs in the ninth inning. The last batter, if he gets him out, it's a perfect game. The, the batter hits a ground ball. They throw it to the first. He's, he's clearly out by a step, and the umpire calls him safe. He blew the call. He admitted later he screwed up. That led to them putting in instant replay. And some of these plays is just really bang, bang, very hard to tell with, with the naked eye. So they put an instant replay, and they developed a challenge system to do it. And it, it has corrected a lot of the mistakes that are that are made. And I'm assuming that these mistakes are made just because of of human error, not because of any kind of agenda. And we suspect in boxing that the judging nonsense is not only because of human error or just different reasonable different opinions, but because of corruption and people being paid off or wanting to get these perky jobs where you could sit and watch a fight, have a couple of days in Vegas or New York or wherever and get paid a few grand, you know, for doing next to nothing and get your expenses paid and all of that. So whoever's paying you, which is usually done through the promoter, you tend to, to lean to them. But, but baseball put that in. It's not if you watch baseball, it's far from perfect. Nothing is going to be perfect. Other sports are trying to deal with that in similar ways. Boxing doesn't even have an integrity unit. I mean, it's like a contradiction in terms. It would get howls of lift or any com comedian can get up and talk about, I'm head of the boxing integrity unit. They'll definitely get the crowd rolling with, you know, on the floor with laughter. So th that's, that's where it is. It's catching up with boxing because there's so much competition out there and they're picking off different demographics as, you know, the, the MMA stuff, the thriller, uh, triad combat nonsense where they had Kubrat Pulev, a guy that's the same guy that fought Joshua about a year ago. He had been a title contender, maybe what top 15, top 20, whatever in the heavyweights, but he's and he's about 40. He's a legitimate professional boxer for many years with a, a winning record fighting against an MMA guy, Frank Mir you know, who comes from jujitsu and the MMA people are surprised that Pulev knocked them out in one round. And, you know, Pulev is, is talking, you know, he's going to stick with boxing. There's the chatter that he might fight Joe Joyce, who's a top 10 fighter and a, another heavyweight contender. I think Joyce would, would win that fight. But the point is, he's not, you know, he's not just a, a guy that they found off the street or in a bar somewhere. He's a, he's a professional fighter. They're picking off that, that audience and getting people to believe in their hype and their crap. And you have everything from bare knuckle boxing, which is mainly retired or ex MMA fighters just brawling. And now you even have pillow fighting, professional pillow fighting. Every, they're picking up everything. And boxing is doing the same thing over and over again the audience gets smaller the zone tries to compensate by going worldwide but in how many countries are people going to spend money to buy these fights it's not about the, the quality of the fights but it's it's about how many people are watching and it's fewer and fewer so well, i've been saying this this for years and it gets worse for years and nothing is done about it so, right. Well, we have anything else? Out. I know, Eddie. We have to figure out a way to. We need that boxing integrity unit. I'm gonna just make just create the office, and we'll just show up one day and start checking some shit. <laughs> well, listen. Um, I think that's all we have for today. You got anything else you want to cover, Melissa? 
no, no, we're good. You know, no, we have a bunch of uh, big women's fights coming up on December 11th and December 18th, but we'll okay. talk about it next time. Is, Clarissa, she, is that Clarissa Shields card still on? Yeah. Because Eubank and Williams, that fight got postponed, and that was the lead fight on that card. As far Williams as I know, it injury. is. No, no, no change on that. And Savannah Marshall is uh, is off that car too. But right now, so it's Clarissa still on. Shields might be the main event. It may end up being the main event. Cool. Uh, we'll see what happens. So that's December 11th, same night. Katie Taylor fights, and then you got Amanda Serrano on the 18th on Showtime. So and, and Lomachenko fights December 11th Lo also. Right, and then you got uh, Triple G coming up. And you got Haney Diaz next weekend. So big, big stuff. All right. Well, look, we'll right. be back, folks, next week. Uh, I just, uh, I just week, want to add. Or yeah, I, I want to add one thing too. That in terms of the use of boxing, it's not just watching professional boxing, but particularly with this uh, Rittenhouse uh, verdict, a lot more people are looking to train in various forms of self-defense and boxing can play a role in that. So I think that's Absolutely. an area that we have to really explore and find credible people that are using the, the various forms of hand-to-hand -hand combat for self-defense in this in this period that we're in. Right on. Absolutely. All right. Well, look, folks, that's all we have for you guys today. If you want to hear more in-depth coverage on the corrupt world of boxing and sports governance in general, then you know you need to smash that like button, hit the subscribe button, and also Make sure you turn on your notifications so you know the next time we drop a new episode. All right, so um, you can find Eddie. Mr. Eddie, you want to tell them where you can, uh, where the people yeah. can find you? EddieGoldman.com on Twitter, at NHB News. Go to my Patreon site, patreon.com slash Eddie Goldman, and look up my red some merch. bubble stuff. Yeah, we got new, new schmatas. I got to get uh, me a bubble. Melissa Good. Yeah, go to Redbubble and find out because that's one way to uh, help support independent journalism and, and subscribe to the Patreon page right, because talking about stuff that is not being talked about in the boxing media for obvious reasons because you have so little independent media left. Yeah. All right, tell the people where they can find you, Melissa. Hey, how are you, Milks? <laughs> I'm uh, at Girl Boxing Now on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, my website is girlboxing.org. You can link to my uh, my page for a history of women's boxing, an excellent right. uh, Hanukkah and Christmas and That's Kwanzaa right. and every other holiday you can think of. Uh, right. Nice holiday gift for your loved ones. And other than that, just keep watching boxing. There's some, some interesting stuff happening. You, I know you got to kind of go under the covers to get to it but it's worth some some of this is really worth finding out that's right all right folks you guys could check me out on twitter at angry afro radio and on instagram at la fight goddess la fight goddess and you can also go to our website at warsports.com that's w-a-a-r sports.com and we will see you next time peace Fantastic.